How you doing guys? Welcome to episode 2 of our Motorola T6 SMS 1966 Ford Thunderbird Radio 8-Track Player Repair Restore. By now you figured out poor John, he caught me. I was hanging out by his, uh, his workshop there, middle of the night, I figured he'd be fast asleep. Figured I'd just run in, grab the radio, fix it, put it back in before I woke up. Good afternoon, everybody. Melanie Lawson and Art Rascone here in the Eyewitness Newsroom. We are following a car chase right now. We believe it is that Dodge Charger you are looking at there. Let's go straight up right now to Don Armstrong, who is above the scene in Sky Eye. And Don, how long have we been chasing this car? Up, and of course he caught me. What am I going to do, right? Just trying to do the right thing for good old John. He's a good friend. For those of you that have just come over to my uh, channel to check this out, welcome. I appreciate it. For my existing subscribers that I've had for a long time, I appreciate you guys too. Thank you. We're going to do some justice to this thing. I've never worked on a car radio, as you've heard John say, but that changes today. Now, you may remember me from John's repair series when he was working on the trunk. If you recall, he had a bunch of rust holes in the trunk and he was looking for suggestions from his subscribers on how to fix that. And one of the uh, suggestions that I remember putting in there was tape some cardboard underneath and fill it in with, with epoxy or, or body filler. Of course, John said, that idea sucks. And as a result of that idea, he sent me this t-shirt. No, my ideas don't suck. So I wear this shirt proudly because it came from John. So anyway, let's dive right into this radio. It's, it's a mess. It's a huge mess, as you will soon see. And it's going to require a lot of work, and it's a lot of difficult work because it's very small and compact. However, we don't give up. We plow forward and we get this thing moving. And remember one thing. This video is for charity. So after we get this radio fixed, cleaned, running, whatever it needs to be done, we're going to donate all the proceeds that we get from selling it to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I'm a very, very um, loyal subscriber to them. I, I donate to them all the time. So does John. We didn't know that about each other. We just found that out through this project. So I would encourage you to do the same thing. All right, let's dive in. Welcome. All right, let's dive in. So first thing we did was remove the covers. I showed you the, uh, the mud dauber nest that was in there. That's been removed. What you see here is a really old radio. Fortunately, not a lot of rust, a lot of dirt. There's a little bit of rust on the cover, which I'll show you in a moment. First thing we did, well, obviously, was just poke around here a little bit. We've got some wires that have to get routed through channels. First thing we did was take off this belt. This belt is no good. This belt is definitely no good. So we're going to replace that. You can get these belts on Amazon, on eBay. We're not going to need the belt yet, though. First, we need to do is uh, reassemble or disassemble this thing and figure out what it needs. Now, um, the book that I showed you in the first episode, which is the Sam's PhotoFact AR35, has all the boards here, but it doesn't tell you what they are, unfortunately. So um, we're going to need to do a little research on that and figure it out. But you'll see here... All of these capacitors, bad. They have to be bad. Here's a couple right here. These things are, uh, let's see, I was born in 1963. This radio was made in 1965, which means it's old, like me. Matter of fact, my, uh, my electrolytic capacitors are probably dried up too, <laughs> now that I think about it. But we are going to um, do a full recap of all the electrolytics, and there's 17 of them in this radio, I believe, or in this unit. Let's confirm that. Let's see, 1 through 24, there's 25 of them in this, uh, in this unit. So we're going to replace them all, and they're all relatively small value. Uh, they, they go from 16 volts to 20 volts, obviously because they're in a car. So um, they're going to be pretty small components, probably smaller than what's in here, all right? because these are 55 years old. So let's take a peek around. I want to show you some stuff I've done on the front as well. So let me set that up, and we'll be right back. Okay, first thing we did is we took off this, uh, this bezel, okay? And you'll notice right here the glass is cracked. It's not even glass, it's plastic. So we're going to do some surgery and fix that. 
uh, I've got some tape here just to hold the screws down so we don't lose the screws because you got to remember that every screw that's used in these units is a specific length and has a specific purpose. You don't want to mix them up. So when we look underneath this glass, you'll see that there's a piece of something, probably not plastic, um, not sure what it is. This looks like it's rubber. So we'll be able to pry that out and put a replacement piece of uh, plastic in there. That'll be fine. And we'll clean up this bezel best we can and see if we can make it look like new again. And the stuff that I use on Chrome, which I will demonstrate as we move along in the project, but stuff that cleans Chrome really well is Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. You'll be amazed at what this stuff does on the Chrome on this thing. And I'll demonstrate that as we move forward. All right, so now we have our door and we have our dial. And we can take this, uh, this piece out right here. This is our dial, and obviously um, it lights up from behind, and we can prove that with a flashlight, if I can find a flashlight here, um, which we will get to in a moment, because I don't have a flashlight. But this thing um, is, uh, is reflective, so you put it up against the light, and uh, it'll light up, which is good. Here's our dial pointer, and here's our bulb. And there's a bulb right underneath here. Okay, I went and got a flashlight. And we're going to turn this light off so you could see. And this is what it looks like. All right, there's your numbers for your dial. Of course, this is very bright. The bulb that's in there isn't this bright, so you could see some of the imperfections in this coating. If you look closely. So that's that. Anyway, let's put our light back on. So um, we can replace this bulb if we have to. I think the bulb may work. I don't know. We'll test it. We're going to remove this door. And it looks like there's two screws right here that hold this door in place that we can take it out. We're going to, we're going to verify that. And then um, on the other side, um, hmm, just found a pin here. I wonder what that's for. Well, we'll find out. Um, I started to look at the boards. Now, you, you heard me say in the manual that it doesn't tell you what the boards are. So the first board that I removed is right here. There's a ground runner that goes right to this chassis here. And I want to show you something on this board to prove why we need to work on this radio. So let me get this uh, set up here in a way that you can see it. Right there. See the tops of those caps? Let me see. make sure I get it in the shot. See the tops of these caps right here? This is all the crap that's come out of the caps from the years. These caps are bad. These caps are bad. I'm not sure if that looks more like a factory coating. But this one is certainly leaking. It could even be wax. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. They're coming out. Now, what does this board do? Let's zoom the shot out. So we go in our manual. And the reason why I'm showing you this is just to show you the steps. I'm not going to show you for every board. Because I'm sure you guys are smart enough to know all this stuff. But if I look through the uh, manual, and I look at the boards that are here, one more page, right here. Here's the board that we were just looking at. Now, it doesn't tell you what the board does. That's the problem. But it's got the same capacitors that I just showed you. Here's the one that I just showed you that was leaking. And if I look at that cap, which is C7, right here, and I go to our parts list, which is right here, I can tell that this is C7, it's a 20 microfarad cap at 16 volts. But the real clue is going to be the transistors. So right next to that cap is X4, right there. If I zoom in on our transistors, right there, and we look at X4, X4 is our first preamp left channel. Then we have X5, which is our second preamp left channel. So that tells me that this is our preamp board. So this means that this is our, um, our preamp board and our audio board. So, so this is going to be our output, right? This is going to be the board that generates the noise. So if I plug in this radio right now and try to use it, it ain't going to work. Or it's not going to work well. I'm not going to risk doing that because there are little transformers in this thing. And we don't want to risk blowing out the transformers. And we don't want to risk blowing out the, um, the power transistors. 
right? There's two power transistors right here, which are the 1N461s, uh, and those are the ones that are on the top of the unit. So, our first order of business is going to be to replace these caps, okay? Now, I have some of them, others I don't have, and I've had to order them. But just to give you an idea, here we go. So this is some of my stock. I want to make sure that all these pieces fit. Some of these are 50 volts. I don't need 50 volts. I really need much smaller deals. I also need axle leads in these things. Radio leads won't work, okay? Only because that board has to be flat. There's not a lot of clearance in there. So um, we will start the cat process. And the first thing we're going to fix is that board. My theory is that if I fix that board and get that board working, we'll then do a power on test and see if the radio makes any noise. The other thing I want to show you is our wiring. So in the first episode, I showed you our wiring was a real mess. Well, what I've done to make that simple and for allow me to trace it back is I've removed the old connectors. I've saved them so I can put them back in. And I've added these auto connectors, which are waterproof, right here. Okay? And I may just leave these on, and when I donate the unit, someone will have the wires that they can connect to their harness. So this is the power. It follows the color code. This wire, believe it or not, is blue, and so is this one. And this one is black, and so is that one, and the red one we don't use. So this is our power connector, connector, and this will allow me to set up a test bed to test this thing. And then our speakers is a little bit of a different story. Our speakers have three wires coming out. There's a yellow, I'm sorry, it's a white, but just, it's just old. A white, an orange, and a purple. And I followed that through to this connector as well. And there's a little bit, it's a little bit less of an even match here. So I have the, um, the purple going to blue. I have the white going to black. And I have the orange going to red. All right. And I'll mark all this, you know, when I'm, when I'm done fixing this thing. But this is our speaker connection. So I'm not sure exactly how it works. One of them is going to be center or, or ground. Um, and I did test that, by the way. And I'll do that with you here. So we're going to put our meter on continuity. Let's test our first one to the chassis. Okay. So the center one, which is white, has no reference to the chassis. Let's test, test this blue one, which is really purple. Looks like we are getting something there. There we go. Let's test our orange. There is a reference. We'll just test that one one more time. All right, so one has no reference, and the other two do. See that right there? And right there. If we actually measure this one, we're getting 13 ohms. My old hands don't work the way they used to. This one's getting 1 1.6 ohms. So I've got 1.6 ohms, 13 ohms, and the center one should be infinite. Let's find out. Okay. So we now know that the orange wire is 1.6 ohms. Let's take a look at our schematic. Let's see if we can learn anything about this. And I'm doing this along with you guys here. All right, here's our schematic. Here's our speaker plug right here. Let me move this light so you can see it. And I want to zoom in right here. We have an output transformer, and you'll see that it's an 8 ohm speaker, and it looks like it's 1.2 ohms. Well, we just measured 1.6, so I'm pretty confident that that's going to be one of the speaker leads. The other one is 14, which I'm going to have to investigate because it shouldn't be 14, right there. So we'll have to see what that's connected to and, and play around with there, but at least I'm starting to get to a good place. And you'll notice that the center of the speaker plug right here has a reference to ground, right? It doesn't have a reference to the, the ground on the radio, but it has a reference to the ground in the car, right? And that's going to be for noise suppression. 
So we're starting to get ourselves organized and, uh, and that type of thing. And we now have our, uh, our connectors that we can use more reliably than having old tape. So that's where we are. Uh, I will um, come back to you after I've replaced a few caps. I'm not going to show you the whole thing of recapping this thing because I'm sure many of you have recapped radios and things before. So I'm not going to show you all that, but I'll do a couple of these and then show you how I do it. And then we'll end this first, uh, first episode. The plan after that is to come on this side and start to replace all of these capacitors. Okay? And I will do that after this episode is complete. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to do a power-up. I remember that pin that I just showed you that I was like, oh, where'd that pin come from? Well, now I see it. It's right here. See that little roller? That's a little guide roller that is used for the 8-track when you put the 8-track in. So we're going to replace that. That's the thing about this old stuff. You never know. I don't want to lose that piece. Anyway, no sense of you watching me do that. We're going we're gonna to get that pin back in and we'll just make sure it doesn't come out again. So anyway, that's it. That's it for now. Let me get some of this recap done on this uh, other side on the output board. <clears throat> and then we'll be, uh, we'll be on a roll. I'll be back. So looking through my inventory, the only uh, cap that I can change right now is this one. And this is a 20 microfarad cap at 16 volts. And the only one that I have in stock is a uh, 22. I think it's right here. This is a 22 at 25 volts right there. You could see that. Probably not. So the only one we're going to change right now is this one. But what I did is I left myself a map here. This card, I, I'm not going to unsolder all the wires. I'm going to be really careful how I work on it. So I've drew myself a map. Here's the value of the cap. Which side is positive. I've got it marked with the designation, and I know exactly what I got to put here. So before I change that cap, which I'll do off camera, I told you I was going to demonstrate this um, this mother's mag polish. And I want to do that and show you how well this stuff works. Now I'm going to move this light, and you'll see right here there's a shine already, but there's nothing here. That's because I've already shined up this part. But we're going to shine up this part for you, so you can see how it works. Just take a little bit on the cloth like this. Right? It's a white paste, and you know it'll start working when it turns black. It's not an abrasive, so there's no abrasiveness in this thing at all. All it really does is it removes the oxidation. So we're going to scrub that whole thing. A little goes a long way on this stuff. Okay, now we're going to buff it. Okay, so you could see we've now got a nice shine here, which we didn't have a minute ago. So that's how this stuff works, and it, I'll just do the entire uh, cabinet with that, and um, we'll have a nice little, uh, nice little result at the end. So let me change that cap, and we'll be right back. Okay, on this board, I had to make a command decision, and that was to remove the wires that were holding the board uh, in place, or restricting me from looking at it. And the reason why is this is a very, very old circuit board. And those traces are likely uh, stick-on traces. Which means if I try to mess with this too much, I'm going to pull those traces up and I'm going to be in a world of trouble. So, all I did was I took my paper and I marked my map. What wire went where. Okay? And now I can, uh, I can work on this board much safer and see what I'm doing and not play with it too much. My plan is going to be to replace all of the capacitors that you see right here. One, two, three, four, five, and I've already taken out one. I'm also going to replace these transistors. These are uh, germanium transistors, I believe, and they are known to go bad, but I'm going to test them first. I have a tester. So we have a bunch of, tr of transistors on here that are probably bad as well. So we're going to replace everything. That's the plan. We have some capacitors here. These are 0.01s. And we have a couple of resistors, and we'll check the tolerance of those. And by the time we put this board back in, it's going to be brand new. 
And this is an important board, right? This is your preamp board, so this is going to be important stuff. I don't think I need to remove these audio cables, which I'm going to try not to because they're very thin wire. Um, but certainly we're going to strip the deck on all this stuff and get it cleaned up. Okay, so that's going to be the plan. After I get this, uh, I think I told you this already, but after I get this replaced and cleaned up and put back together, we are going to put it back into the radio and test it. Because I believe that uh, the power section does work, I'm pretty sure of that. And uh, we are going to, uh, we're going to test this thing out after we put this in and make sure it works. We're going to go one step at a time so we know. We have a very large can cap here. This is a thousand microfarad, which, uh, you know, in today's components is this. It's a thousand microfarads at 25 volts. This is a thousand at 16 volts. So this is this, just to give you an idea. So we'll have to figure out how we get that out to replace it. But I wanted to show you what we're, what we're looking at inside here. Very, very, very tedious work and very, very tight quarters, as you can imagine. However, because it's John's, we'll do it. All right, guys, I will see you in episode three. I anticipate this series will probably be about 10 episodes. That's my guess. Unless I can make a lot of progress sooner than that. Okay? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'll see you guys around. One last thing I want to show you guys, and you may be saying, like, why is he changing all the caps, right? So you know caps go bad, right? They have a lifespan of 20 years. Here's a .20, I'm sorry, a 20 microfarad cap that we've taken out of that uh, driver board, that preamp board. We're going to measure it on our meter. Let's see what we got. A hundred and three microfarads. That can't be good. We're getting 1.9 meg of resistance. That tells you this thing is really bad. That's why we're changing them all. We're going to bring it back to spec, guys. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.